Hi, welcome back. I'm Newman. This is my life with plants. This is the garden. We didn't get to see this very much, do we? Latila. It grows in our garden here. It's been here for years. Azalea. Wow! Beautiful fragrance. Snowbells. <sighs> Lily of the Valley. Nice. Look at that moss. And then over here. There's a Dendrobium nobilis, and they've been growing out there for many, 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 many years. And here it goes, can go down to minus eight in the winter. And you can see that the one up above has got buds. We've got to have a look at this moss, look. Love it. That feels good. It's like, it feels like carpet. And over here we have a herbert's foot fern. This whole thing dies down to nothing but the rabbit's feet. And then it comes away every springtime. So this is completely cold hardy, frost and everything. Yeah, as I was saying, that one up above has got buds. So the one down below isn't quite getting enough light but anyway my neighbor decided to give me some and we're gonna try it out on this tree there's a really light pink flower she said nothing much to rave on about but I put sphagnum moss and wrap it around so you can see that it's got a new um, cane growing out of there and it also had a cane that had keikis growing off it. It's got plenty of moss there for it to grow from and to attach itself to this conifer tree, which is right here. Maybe you want to have a look at this thing. It's got huge leaves. I'll put the name for you. But here in Japan, the new stems that come up, we cut them off and cook them as vegetables. Also down here, we have this plant here. If you pull this out with your hand, it leaves nasty stains. It also has, it's quite astringent. So it has a kind of a nasty smell, but... Um, Japanese used to use this for tea. Here we have the, the one that's native to most of Asia. It's a resurrection fern. It grows on rocks. It's like a lithophyte. But here, it's growing everywhere. Everywhere you look, you've got resurrection fern popping up. So we've got no lack of it. A nice wiry one there too. <sighs> More of it here. It's a neat fern. It's really neat. Love it. Never get enough of it. 
And over here are these are my hydrangeas. Which have the buds. This is a multi flowering one. So there are many shades of pink, white, and blue. Up here is propagation area. Down there are the Echinopsis seedlings that have been growing for a few years and they've been potted on. Here are more. These are extra Hawathias that they give away, including these Echinopsis, mixed cacti there, succulents, and big, massive Hawathias. And also here, too, propagation area. Some jelly beans there, some Echinopsis, some ones that I just potted on because I had too many pups. These are much older, these plants. Yep, that's where I propagate. And a nice big piece of ceroid there. And better get out of here, mosquitoes are coming. Few succulents up here, aloes, they get a bit beaten up in the winter. All right, just wanted to show you around the garden here. Oh, before we go, mm. right there is a blatia, white flowering one that I planted in there a few years ago. It's now colonized the whole area. Yes. I want to buy a few more of those with different colors. Anyway, that's all for me. That's where I keep my ceroids. Cirrus jamacarus. Um, sedum. Spectabili. A big gnarly twisted aloe here. It's been here for years in that pot. Stapelia gigantea, Arlo Aristata, this gymnocolisium that was actually had all the roots had rotted off including the main root and it miraculously grew a new root system. After two years of being unpotted and it was sitting up on the ground, on the bare cold ground all winter and it even got snowed on. I had to dig it out of the snow to completely cover it. And then uh, after a couple of years, I decided to stick it in there. Just sit it on the soil and it grew a whole new root system. And the name of that is Gymnocolisium seglionis. So that is probably the toughest plant I've ever known. I mean, it's amazing, that plant. Up here is my Sologenes Intermedia. I'm still waiting for it to grow. It's kind of... I'm new to these kind of orchids. Flowers are going to open soon on this native Japanese orchid, also native to the Pacific. Got some cuttings down there, Ripsalis. And that's my Pleonies. They're leafing up now. I also took the opportunity to grow some Hoyas out here. And uh, Philodendron Brazil. And one of my prized plants right here. This is a Hosta, believe it or not, but it's a variegated form. Beautiful, right? Look at those beautiful leaves. Look, as big as my hand. This one grows up in the shade here. Get some really late afternoon sun. It's nice and moist. It's growing in a pot. And I put sphagnum moss around the top of it and it's rooted into the soil, into the garden here. <laughs> 
So being a hosta, it'll die right down to its corns or its bulbs. And then it comes away again in the spring. So it's completely cold hardy down to minus 20 degrees. And this is a, you might think that this is asparagus, but this is a hibiscus. And it's starting to come away again, see? You just cut the old stems off and away it grows again. This is not a native of Japan, it's actually a native of northern US. And it's one of the colder hardier hibiscus. You can see it's got one there, two, two more shoots there. I'm going to give it some fertilizer. And this is just conifer cuttings. I just chuck them on there as a bit of a mulch to keep it moist. There's a beautiful white flower. Okay, all finished. Thanks for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. And, uh, don't forget that. Looking after your plants isn't a chore, it's part of your self-care. So get outside soon and look after a plant and you'll feel much better for it. Bye bye now.